The Immortal John Hancock here, and today I'm going to be discussing import Game Gear games that we never got here in the States. I have a few physical copies of these. Thank you to Corey of Classics and Oddities. Let's take a look. First up is Galaga 91. Galaga 91 is actually an arcade port of Galaga 88. And I don't know why this wasn't released here in the States. Galaga was a huge hit in the States, but because it was released in 1991, the title was changed to Galaga 91. And the first level starts off kind of a more traditional Galaga title, but as time goes on, it goes more into a traditional shooter. And so I really like this title. I think the Game Gear version is decent. And you know, there is a Turbo Graphics version as well. But, you know, the Game Gear, you know, is not known for these types of games as much. And so it's nice to see this a very colorful and faithful port. I'm a huge fan of arcade ports, especially to inferior consoles. I always like the subtle differences or to see how much the hardware can be pushed. And this is a good example. Very colorful game. It is awesome gameplay. It has cool power-ups. I really enjoy this version of Galaga 88, which is called Galaga 91. And so as you can see, the second level is kind of more traditional shooter and there's bosses and there's power-ups. So if you're tired of playing Galaga for the billionth time, check out its sequel, which we didn't get here in the States. Next up is Magical Puzzle Popples. Don't be fooled by the generic story at the beginning of this game. This is an excellent puzzle platformer. Uh, it has over a hundred levels. It is deceiving how addicting this game can be. You know, at first I was thinking like, what is the big deal here? I initially found out about this game watching uh, Rares on YouTube. And, you know, after playing this game a little bit, I definitely want to play this game more. And so essentially you have to smash blocks and help get reunited with the princess on each stage. It starts out really simple and gets a lot more complicated. You get bonuses for using less steps. And I've never played a game like this. And so I'm always looking for new puzzle platformers. And this is definitely kind of more puzzle than anything. Of all the games that I am showing today, I actually think I'll be revisiting this one more. I've definitely been in the mood of playing these types of puzzle platform games, and I'm really excited about coming back and checking this out. Up next is Elise Day 2. This game is also known as Power Strike 2, and I love myself a good shooter. There's some cool weapons upgrades in this game. You get to choose at the start of the game kind of how you want your power-ups to begin. And I just love everything about this game. It's It's got awesome graphics. It's got fast gameplay. You know, especially on, for the Game Gear. You know, Game Gear uh, didn't get enough of these. And this really shows, you know, the power of the Game Gear, awesome colors. And, you know, for a shooter, you know, you don't think of Game Gear especially as something that offered a shooter as detailed and as polished as this. You know, I think Game Gear, unfortunately of the time, was overshadowed by other better selling handhelds and consoles, yet here is an amazing shooter. And it was offered in a couple regions, but unfortunately we didn't get this in the States. And so, you know, shooters, uh, you know, obviously this is done by the legendary Compile, they did other amazing games, and so this is probably hands down, probably top three I would recommend to play on the Game Gear Import Library. Check it out. Up next is Pop Breaker. Pop Breaker is a combination of puzzle and shooting. 
I haven't played anything quite like it, and that's why I'm recommending this. And so, at the beginning of the game, you choose left, center, or right, and that's the position of your cannon. I chose middle. I'm sure there's a strategy uh, for what is better or not. In each level, there's various weapon upgrades and power-ups and one-ups. And, you know, you go around with various ways of getting through each level. I like the variety and the different gameplay options of playing through a level. It's pretty interesting. And so you get to a boss of each level and you take it out and then you clear it. And so each, you know, boss for each stage is different and you have to figure out strategies of how to defeat it. This one's pretty easy being first level. Up next is Magical Tarurutukun. Based on a manga and anime series, this is yet another shooter that we did not get here in the States. It's pleasant, it's kind of a cute em up and you know, there is a Mega Drive game of the same name, which I think is better, but this is a decent shooter. You know, it's not the best. It was an early release in 91, and I think this is a pleasant surprise on the Game Gear library. In the game, you can find this witch and you get a power-up option or one-up so it kind of adds a little bit to the complexity of the game choosing your power-up and so i like it i think this is a great shooter especially for people that want like a shooter light that's not too difficult it is has really nice big colorful sprites so if you're playing on the go on a game gear then this is a good option for you. I enjoy these games. You know, this is just yet another example of what the Game Gear could do, especially early on. This was an early release. The boss battles are huge. The, the bosses take up like half the screen. While it's not as good as the Sega Mega Drive game of the same name, I think for a shooter, it is decent and something worth checking out. Up next is Griffin. Griffin is an unbelievably rare game. It is a tank shooter and a pretty decent one. Definitely worth checking out, at least on emulator. And so what you have is you have uh, different abilities and power-ups as you progress on the ground with your tank. And it's very colorful. As you progress in this game, you get different upgrades your main cannon becomes wider and you're able to uh, do more damage and so what i like about this game is that it uh, varies from level to level you know first off you're in kind of like a forest area second level you're in a desert each level has a sub boss that you have to check you have to defeat so that's kind of neat as you play this game and progress it does get very challenging and so you do have a limited number of lives to play this game and so that adds to the difficulty this is probably a more challenging game to beat and it is fairly well done yet another shooter on game gear that we didn't get what i really like about this game is the bosses at the end of the levels they fill up the screen you know, you can use your special abilities to take them out easily. And I found myself really enjoying this game. Not the best shooter, but definitely one that I haven't played before and it is worth revisiting. Up next is Royal Stone. Unlike many other recommendations today, this one is difficult if you can't read Japanese. The good news is that there are many fan translations out there that provide opportunities for a game such as this available on the internet that you can play this game with English translation from fans. And so this is the sequel to Crystal Warriors, which we did receive here in the States. So if you're a fan of that game, this is worth checking out. I love the fact that there are so many people in the gaming community working hard to provide translations so that people around the world can enjoy games such as this. These are just a few of the many import Game Gear games that we never got here in the States. What is your favorite? 
What is your favorite that you saw today? Comment below. Thank you so much for the ongoing support and keep it positive. Make sure to subscribe. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the immortal John Hancock. You take care.